When disaster struck at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in March 2011, the IAEA offered immediate assistance to the plant operators and the Japanese authorities as they tried to regain control over the reactors. The IAEA began sharing verified information about the accident with the world and helped to channel international assistance to Japan. Work is underway on a comprehensive agency report on the Fukushima Daiichi accident, which will be finalized by the end of 2014. The goal is to produce an authoritative, factual, and balanced assessment addressing the causes and consequences of the accident, as well as lessons learned. This report is intended to serve as a key reference document on the accident for years to come. It is a major undertaking, and I'm grateful to all member states which are in a position to provide support. The Fukushima Daiichi accident affected scores of people and was a grim reminder that nuclear accidents can happen, they do happen. It further reminded us that safety can never be taken for granted and is a work in progress, not a status reached once and forever. Strengthening nuclear safety since this accident has been a top priority of the IAEA and of the global nuclear community. And since the adoption of the Nuclear Safety Action Plan in 2011, much progress has been made in this regard. And now to share this progress, the IAEA will publish a comprehensive report on the Fukushima Daiichi accident, which distills and assembles all of the information and all the lessons learned in one place, providing a knowledge base for the future, in the hope that this kind of accident will never happen again. It's very important whenever there is a major nuclear accident or event that the world learns what they can from the event. Uh, it's a very important discipline because that's basically a mechanism by which you seek to assure that the circumstances that cause the nuclear accident don't arise again. And in recognition of that fact, the Director General, as part of the action plan, had committed for a whole series of activities by the International Atomic Energy Agency to try to assure that the lessons from the Fukushima accident are learned and applied by regulators and operators all over the world. Special Coordinator of the Action Plan on Nuclear Safety, Gustavo Caruso, is the driving force behind this project and responsible for the overall management. The agency has created several committees to draft, review, and advise on the IAEA conference report on Teppo Fujima Daiichi accident. The core group is comprised of agency senior management. Its purpose is to oversee the whole process of the preparation of the report. The Secretariat is supported by an international technical advisory group, ITAC, that advises on the technical soundness of the report. The ITAC is composed of individuals who have important roles within various organizations working on nuclear safety issues. In addition, approximately 130 experts from over 40 member states were invited to take part in this major undertaking. These experts are distributed among five working groups, led by an external and at least an internal IEA co-chair. Each working group is responsible for authoring a different chapter of the report. Chapter 1 will describe what happened during and immediately following the Fukushima accident, concentrating on principal events. It will discuss the Japanese nuclear infrastructure before the accident and the context of the accident, with a background the Japanese legislative system, the regulatory framework and the operating organizations. As such, Chapter 1 will serve as the foundation of all other chapters, providing data, information and even descriptions to be analyzed in the other chapters. Chapter 2 will answer the question, why did the accident happen? The assessment will be made by evaluating conditions prior to the accident and their impact on how the accident progressed from a severe external event into a severe accident. Based on this assessment, we intend to develop lessons that can be used by regulators and operating organizations around the world 
to modify their plants, processes and procedures to help ensure that an accident like this one will never happen again. The objective of Chapter 3 is to conduct a comprehensive assessment of the accident at TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant from the perspective of emergency preparedness and response. Based on the performed analysis, this chapter will comprise lessons for further strengthening the area of emergency preparedness and response. This chapter will add specific components to the IAEA Fukushima Comprehensive Report, making it the only report at the international level which will provide an authoritative, factual and balanced assessment of emergency preparedness and response to the accident. Chapter 4 is intended to assess the radiological consequences of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident. It aims to review comprehensive information and data on radiation exposure of people and the environment, its impact on foodstuffs and agricultural production. The chapter aims to provide comprehensive and objective information about the possible consequence of real exposures associated with the accident. Currently, there are two other reports written by organizations of the UN family. The IA report intends to add value in two different ways, technical and formal. This chapter covers the important issue of spent nuclear fuel management and national policy and strategies for managing the large quantities of radioactive waste. It also addresses the social aspects of the Fukushima accident and how residents have been affected, including reactions of the local population and possible recommendations to improve living conditions. The aim of Chapter 5 is to review the current post-accident situation and recovery plans and to learn from this accident in order to facilitate further recovery activities in Japan and to share these lessons with the international community. The report will be finalized by the end of 2014.